Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now it seems a bit silly to use the word budget when talking about the new i5-13400F here, a CPU that costs £200 in the UK. It's not the usual sort of thing I'd review, but I wanted to give you my opinion on it as someone who doesn't use a high-end computer on a daily basis. Now I'm sure there will be loads of tests conducted with 4090s and 7900XTs, I'm sure, so I want to ask and answer the question, is this worth it if you are putting together a more reasonably priced rig? I've got mine in a basic MSI H610MB motherboard with 3200 MHz DDR4 in pairing with a 3060 Ti. Now it's not a budget build by my usual definition, but by no means have I gone all out, far from it. The first thing I wanted to know was how much faster it would be than my i5-12400F for content creation. After all, we have 6P cores plus 4E cores and 16 threads this time around. This means that in CPU intensive tasks such as video rendering and other benchmarks, the 13400F is noticeably faster from a multi-core perspective. Not so much as far as single core performance is concerned though, but in editing software like like DaVinci Resolve, cutting up and tweaking a video feels a bit snappier and rendering said video is quite a lot faster. I've actually included the CSGO benchmark here too because it is a good way of highlighting the performance difference between these two processors, given how it is way more CPU intensive. For the price, the performance of the i5-13400F is very good, though if you want to save a bit of money with a 12th gen part, you're not exactly going to be getting a slow experience. Some more gaming tests now, and as expected, the i5-13400F is very good indeed. I've included the clock speed of the physical P and E cores on screen in the stats too, by the way, but from my findings, this chip had no issues with any games I threw at it today. I have mine paired with a 3060 Ti, as I said at the start, but you could go way higher in terms of GPUs. I'm also using a Noctua cooler for now, but I'll have a quick word on the included stock cooler at the end of the video. I just used this one because it was on the desk next to me, and at this point, when I was typing the script up, I hadn't unboxed the stock cooler yet. Now my first test was the older but ever popular Battlefield 1, which ran with over 180 FPS at the highest in-game settings with 1080p resolution. Now I'll have a longer video showcasing the i5-13400F and 3060Ti pairing in a larger selection of games very soon, as well as some lower cost but recommended pairings too. 1440p is also more than doable of course, with a very solid result at the same ultra graphical preset. Battlefield 1 still holds up in terms of gameplay and visuals as far as I'm concerned. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with its next gen patch now, and here we saw over 100 frames per second yet again with respectable percentile lows. It's often these busier city areas that cause the most issues as far as processors are concerned because there is a lot more going on at once and there are more NPCs roaming around, which can cause increased CPU usage. There were no such issues here though. At 1440p it's a similar story of course with the game hitting over 100 FPS again and not dropping below 60 at all, even at Ultra. Another solid set of results. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered is quite CPU intensive but posed no problem for our capable combo here. The average figure was very good and so were the 1.1% lows at 1080p yet again. This was at the very high settings with TAA and ray tracing turned off. I haven't enabled ray tracing in any of today's tests. 1440p is also more than playable. Like I said, I'll be testing 15 to 20 games with this setup very soon at 1440p and potentially 4K to give you a more in-depth look at how a build like this handles itself. But for now, let's move on to Forza. In Forza Horizon 5, I ran the in-game benchmark to determine performance at 1080 and 1440p. Now this can be quite system intensive as it takes place in this little town area which is generally more intensive than just driving around in the open countryside. The gameplay on screen is unrelated but it was still performed with the same hardware, it just 
changes things up a bit instead of seeing the benchmark run over and over. Now the 1080p result was absolutely solid of course and the same can be said for 1440 though as you would expect the percentile lows are generally a bit well lower. No issues whatsoever with performance. Cyberpunk 2077 is definitely the most intensive game on today's list especially when driving through a busy downtown night city with the crowd density at its highest. The high preset overall gave us no problems and ultra is definitely possible with some larger performance dips. You could also enable RT and DLSS or FSR if you want to of course. The CPU usage doesn't spike as high as it does with my 12400F to be expected but more about that later. Switching to 1440, and just like it has been throughout both resolutions, the 3060 Ti is the limiting factor, but it's still a solid card for 1440p gaming, especially as the prices of them new and used are going down all the time. Before we discuss some comparative results, let's finalise with some Modern Warfare 2 benchmarks. This was running at the Extreme preset, which is totally unnecessary, I know, but it's completely possible and playable, especially at 1920x1080. At 1440p, well, I'd recommend turning a few things down settings-wise, especially if playing online, because there were dips below 60. Using Ultra makes far more sense instead in a competitive multiplayer FPS, possibly lower, but I just wanted to show you that this combo will handle anything you throw at it, even when the resolutions and settings are turned way up. Alright, so now I want to expand on some comparative figures. If you do plan to use the 13400F with what is officially a mid-range graphics card and just have gaming in mind, should you get this over the 12400F? Well, after taking the results from a few of the more CPU-intensive games and comparing them with both CPUs, the answer is it depends. If they're really close in price where you live, then yeah, get the newer chip. I certainly wouldn't feel like I was missing out, though, if I bought a 12400F right now, that's for sure. And I didn't have a higher-end card to pair it with because it is still very capable. And in a lot of gaming situations with a card like a 3060 Ti, you're not really going to see a difference, unless it's CSGO, where it's relying entirely on the CPU almost. Now you'll have to wait for Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unboxed to publish their videos, if they are doing videos on this chip, to see how it fares with a higher end graphics card and in comparison to other processors, but I think we're going to see a lot of 13400F and 3060 Ti pre-builts hit the market very soon. It's like the ultimate sweet spot setup. That's really why I wanted to talk about such a combo today. If you want to do a bit of editing and content creation though, then you will notice more of a significant difference with the newer 13th gen part, and in that regard it's much more recommendable. A quick word on the included stock cooler then before I go, it's the same one you'll find with the i3-13100F and it's adequate. Barely any noise at idle, but definitely noticeably louder under load. The warmest the i5-13400F got was 81 degrees when using it for a couple of hours today, doing various things. Overall then, the 13400F is a great CPU, and one that I'm sure we'll be seeing in a lot of pre-built gaming PCs over the next couple of years. Hopefully we'll see the price drop a little bit too. I hope you've enjoyed my look at it from a more mainstream perspective, and I'll certainly be keeping it in my system for the foreseeable future. Thank you very much for watching then, if you enjoyed this one leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know what you think of this CPU below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.